Let's hear it. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Are all you tax cheats ready to pay up this weekend? It's a very sensitive subject at the moment, so. <laughs> <laughs> Cost of living. Um, do you, welcome, on behalf of everyone here, welcome to Liverpool, welcome to For the Love of Wrestling. Um, how's, how are you finding it? Are you enjoying yourselves? Me, I'm, I'm loving it. It's been two years since I've been over here, and, and, and it's been nothing but wonderful since I've been back. And thank you so much for all the support and love that you guys have shown. I want to stay. I want to stay here. <laughs> I, I love it, and I really appreciate it, and I... I, I can't uh, appreciate it enough how much you guys have been wonderful. Myself, I'm just happy that I could get in the ring without falling. <laughs> it's harder than it looks as well. Right? Um, but anyway, the less you hear from me, the more from you. We're here to take your... Watching you. Um, we're here to take your question, so take a moment, have a think. If you've got a question for either or both these gentlemen, pop your hand in the air and let's see what we can do. So questions, questions. Surely you have something to ask. Can you stand up for a moment? First of all, how about the outfit here? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, so the question's to IRS. If you had booked Bo and Bray, how would you have booked them? Would you have put him into the Wyatt family? I would have booked them better than they've been booked, I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't have an exact answer, but that, that would be the answer to it. I'm not even going to repeat that. <laughs> Said you could have been Sister Abigail. <laughs> that's, that's 2022, no judgment. Right, questions. Who's got a question over here? Uh, oh, thank you very much. Are you in a queue, sir? How, what's happened? This is like a Nautilus shell. Right, go ahead. A message from uh, Mike. Um, what memories do you have of SummerSlam 92 with um, the upcoming Cardiff uh, show coming up for the WWE? Well, at the current time, that was the biggest wrestling crowd that I had ever performed in front of, and I thought it was awesome. Um, as far as the Road Warriors, Hawk was a little under the weather, and I'm sure that story has spread over the years. So, uh, But it was a great experience. I mean, from what I understand, it set records um, as far as merchandise being sold. You know, at that time, and that included even the Rolling Stones, so it was a, a huge opportunity for, at the time, WWF and all the guys involved. So it was a great show. Phenomenal. I'm just going to run over here to excuse me. Okay, what's your question? Shout it out. Hey, my question's for Taylor. How did the Bo Leave story come about? How did that gimmick come about? Um... It, it was just a creation of the time. Like, um, I wanted to create something that someone really hated. Like, uh, like it, wrestling in that time and even in this time, like, uh, all the, the bad guys were kind of the coolest characters. And I wanted to create something that was really hateable. Someone that you, you, you despite what you... You really hated him, and, and like he was so good that you couldn't stand him, and that's where the uh, inspiration of the Bo Dallas character came from, is somebody so good that you ha really, really hated, because in this era of where we live today in wrestling, is all the bad guys are, are the coolest characters. I wanted to create something that you could really hate, and that's where that was kind of spawned out of. Perfect. There we go. Uh, have we a uh, question? Ah, very quick, sir. Go for it. <laughs> what was your favorite match of Bray Wyatt? My favorite match of Bray Wyatt? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite match with Bray Wyatt was whenever me and uh, Joe Henning beat him and Matt Hardy for the uh, tag team championships. <laughs> it would be my favorite match. <laughs> well answered, sir. Well ah, there you go. Shout it out. Uh, for Taylor, uh, do you think you're done with wrestling, or do you think you might come back in some form or, or another? Absolutely not. I'm, I'm not. I'm the furthest from done with wrestling that you could possibly be. I've, I've spent the past year 
uh, diving into a bunch of different ventures outside of wrestling, but wrestling has never left my heart, not for one second. And I just wanted to get a couple things done before I dive back into something that I really cared about. And uh, now that I got everything kind of wrapped up and, and working on, um, within the next two to three months, you'll see me back in the ring somewhere very soon because uh, the love of wrestling has never left me. And I've always known I was coming back to it soon, but I just needed to get some other stuff done. But I'll be back in the ring Really, really soon, I promise. <laughs> oh. You heard it here first. Nice T-shirt. Questions, question, question, question. Scanning for questions. Ah, gentlemen, here we go. Right, oh. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Still in time of infection. All right. Hello. Uh, a question for Bo Dallas. Um, how did you... Um, uh, I've, got, I've lost. I've got. How did you, sir? <laughs> How did I? I don't. <laughs> it's a big question. I'm just a bit starstruck. That's for sure. Oh. Well, no, all works. Thank you, sir. It's it's true. Uh, do we have a question? Oh, we have, we have two gentlemen dueling questions. Stop being British and saying after you to each other. Here we go. Hi, this is for Mike. How many times did you find the Ultimate Warrior, and what was his best abilities? Did you hear that? Uh, how many times, sir, did you fight the Ultimate Warrior, and what were his best abilities? Um, not, I, I think I wrestled them maybe one or two matches. I wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't something I was in a program with them. Um, I do remember a TV match that I wrestled with him, and he was limited on what he could do in the ring. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily make you a bad performer because obviously people loved him, you know, with, with the energy and the, in the look of him, uh, he was a great performer in that aspect, and but he wasn't a great technician by any means. But like I said, he was over. You know, he got put in a position, came down to the ring with that entrance and his energy, and people loved it. You know, so and he was phenomenal body on him, and people just, you know, uh, identified with that that kind of. Uh, energy that he brought to the ring and so you know you can't you can't say somebody's not great when they reach that level even though they're not a great technician perfect thank you very much okay and this play plaid wide man uh, yeah a question for mike um after playing those relatively uh, kind of straight gimmicks uh, before you came to wwf when the IRS gimmick was first pitched to you, if it was actually pitched to you or you came up with it yourself, how did you, how did you feel about that, that pitch initially? Well, actually, I, I learned to work heel when I did the varsity club. Up till that time, I was a baby face for like five years when I started till that point. And, and once I started doing the varsity club, I knew I was a heel. I just enjoyed working that aspect of the business. And it just so happened I started to do uh, Michael Wall Street and WCW, and there was a guy by the name of Jim Hurd there at the time. He, he didn't really know what he was doing rest, running a wrestling company, so they offered me six months extension on my contract, and I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. And that's when I went back to WWE, and they came up with the character of Erwin R. Scheister IRS. And at first I was kind of skeptical that it would take off and work, but I soon found out that nobody likes to pay taxes and they hated the name, even the letters IRS. So it was kind of like an instant heat type of uh, character. And, you know, it just spun off into its own, own uh, wave and went with Ted DiBiase, the rich man, the crooked tax guy and it, it worked really well you know so we had a lot of heat because ted was the arrogant rich guy and i was the crooked tax guy and, and you know it just worked well so that's a, kind of how it basically started and it fit me because i was comfortable doing like a michael wall street doing like a that type of um, i don't know i don't want to say kind of entertaining that you were better than everyone. So, and it was probably the most known 
uh, character that I had during my wrestling career. So I was, I appreciate them giving me that opportunity. Fantastic, thank you, Rhett. Uh, gentleman over here. Ugh, here we go. Shout out. Hi, uh, my name, uh, question's for Mike. Uh, what was it like working with Hogan at Caesars Palace? And did you know what was gonna happen towards the end of the night with the double finish with Yoko and Brett and obviously Hogan going over at the end of the night? Obviously you worked with him previously in the night. Did you know that that was gonna happen before you got into the match? Well, uh, actually what happened, that was like a last minute um, angle that we worked with Beefcake and, and Hogan um, and went out there and then they put us in a, like a, it was like a semi main event position, which I was happy to be in, you know, and it just, um, I didn't know following that, that they were going to do what they did with Hogan and Yoko and all that, because you don't get that information. You know, it's basically the information you get is about the segments you have or the match you have. So, you know, they just came up with that creative and, the bad thing about that match with Beefcake and Hogan, they didn't give us much time because what happens in these pay-per-views, especially back then, you're on a set time. Um, and if something goes longer than it was, we call it going heavy, something goes longer, you know, leading up to that, then it, originally they say, well, you got 20 minutes for your match. Now it's down to eight minutes. So you really can't you know, get, get a great match going in eight, eight minutes by any means because you can't build it, you know, and, and um, have a great ending and stick it all into eight minutes. So it was just a situation, but I was pretty happy. It was the biggest payoff I had ever had, you know, working in that, um, working in that spot on the show. So there's a good and a bad to everything. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, this gentleman wearing an NWO shirt in your come forth shout out hi Mike um, just a question about the NWO did you what were your thoughts when the idea was pitched to you to join the group and did you enjoy your time in the faction well I'll be honest with you what happened was I went back to to WCW and that's when they first started the NWO and the first night I was in there they beat me with sting beat me you know and then they put me in a section of the NWO and they just came to me one night early into the contract and said, well, we're going to send you over for a tour in Japan. So I went, really? So I go to Japan for New Japan, and they had just started their own NWO over in Japan. And I talked to Masa Tori, which was kind of like the, he booked the, the guy jeans, they call them, uh, and that means you're not Japanese. So everybody else, they and I said, how many weeks a year can you can I get over here? So he ended up giving me 20 weeks a year, and it basically kept me out of the the U.S. completely, even though I was under co contract to WCW at the time. And really, it was some of the best years I had in the business working over there with uh, New Japan and the NWO. They had. Chono ran the NWO, and we had a group of guys in NWO Sting, who was a guy by, by the name of Jeff Farmer, and we were steady to that group going over there, and we would fight like Muta and all the Japanese guys, and New Japan was really happy with it. They were doing great business using the NWO logo, so it was a really good time for a, something I just fell into, you know, so it worked out well. Magnificent, thank you very much. Right, here we go, sir. Shout it out. Uh, I've got to do my taxes when I get back to Australia. I was just wondering if you had any uh, tips or advice. Yeah, don't cheat on them, because you'll get caught. I'll come back to you in a second. This, this gentleman here has had his hand up. Sorry, it's behind you. Shout it out, my friend. Um, Bill Dallet, who would win, you or Bray Wyatt? <laughs> Me. <laughs> nice and simple question. Though. And I, I'm sure he'd answer it the same way. We're brothers, so we always say we'd win, I'd win, or he'd. W you know what I mean? We're brothers, we, so. Do you, do you have a brother? Yes. Who, would you win? Who'd win between you two? 
Ah. Uh. <laughs> Just you wait. What happens? A little brother gets bigger later. Take it from me. That's how it works. You've, you've had your hand up. We'll get RSI. Here we go. Uh, Mike, on the 15th anniversary of Roy, you competed in the Battle Royal and won. Whose idea was it, and why did you appear? Well, it was, I was actually working as a producer, and they came to me last minute with it and said, you know, we want you to do this. Um, I'm sure it was somebody in creative. You know, the creative team came up with it because I ended up winning it, but then I gave the title right back to DiBiase, and it kind of tied us two together, you know, from an old... Uh, program that we worked together, you know, as IRS and the Million Dollar Man. So it was somebody in creative. I'm, I don't know if it was necessarily Vince came up with it or, you know, or, or uh, just somebody in the creative team. Perfect. Thank you. I believe you had one, sir. Way around. Yeah, wait till I get there. <laughs> I, um, I was just wondering, uh, Mike, about your for um, what thoughts and memories you've got from the first WrestleMania. And... Um, did you ever find it funny that Hulk Hogan ended up robbing your uh, theme music from the US Express? Well, that was my fault and Barry Windham's fault because we left and decided to be young and dumb and quit. So then Hogan took over the music. And, and as far as um, being in the re first WrestleMania, it was awesome. You know, it was like the biggest, widest televised, you know, show of its time. So. It was a pretty neat, unique situation, but what happened too also, we were on the road back in those days, just like 30, 35 days in a row. Then you got to go home for a couple of days and you went back on the road 35 more days and that kind of a schedule. So they had given us, okay, you, you have a week off before WrestleMania, you do WrestleMania, you get another week off. So we jumped on a plane the morning of WrestleMania, took off, flew up to New York, did the show in Madison Square Garden, back to the airport, back to Tampa, because we had a week off. So, but it was a great opportunity. I mean, that was uh, pretty cool to be in that show. And especially knowing how big it's gotten from that point, you know. Thank you very much. I shall mosey here. A hey, question for Bo. Uh, when you were growing up, did you always want to be a wrestler? And if there was any point that you didn't, what did you want to do instead? Uh, honestly, I, uh, I think he knew and maybe wanted to stop me. Uh, but from a very young age, I was always a, a huge wrestling fan. That's, I, I played sports uh, my whole life. Like growing up, I started amateur wrestling at a very young age and, and, and uh, did football. And I was always involved in sports, but like, this was a passion of mine that, like, I knew was going to be a part of my life later on. And my brother was a big fan, too. But, like, I had, like, a, I knew I was going to be a wrestler at some point. And I, I felt like he knew that, too. And he almost wanted to, like, deter me and, like, not, not that he didn't want me to be a wrestler, but try to give me the best opportunity to go uh, in a certain route, and um, I've known my whole life this is what I wanted to do, and uh, I'm happy I'm doing it, and I wouldn't change it for anything, and uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have the opportunity to, to have this life. Trust me, they tore up a lot of stuff in our house having wrestling matches in the living room, so, and they always had a title around to, to fight over, and Plenty of fighting going on. The legitimate NWA title. At, at, he had the NWA title that he got to keep, and like that was our uh, backyard championship title that we used for our, our matches and on the trampolines and mattresses. That the, NW, the real NWA title was our our title <laughs> for the home championship. Fantastic. Right, I have a question over here to your left, uh, right, sir, stage left. A uh, question for Bo. Being a massive part of the uh, origination of the black and gold NXT, what's your thoughts on the massive overhaul now, the change of the colors and stuff, and what was your favorite match from your NXT times? Um, being a part of the, the blowing up of the NXT developmental was huge. Like, y you could feel it, 
like being involved with it, that it was going to be something really big because it went from FC, FCW developmental where like uh, it was few uh, and far between like contact with WWE. It was like there was FCW and then WWE. But when NXT came, it was like NXT was part of the WWE and they were really training people to be the next big thing. And uh, with NXT arrival, everybody involved in that knew they were a part of something big. And um, I can, with no doubts and no hesitation, say my favorite match uh, of my career up to this point uh, was with Adrian Neville at, a, uh, at, um, at Arrival. Um, the latter match with Adrian Neville. Every match I ever had with him, he's uh, up to this point my favorite opponent, opponent I've ever been in the ring with. And uh, I'm looking forward to get, possibly getting back in the ring with him sometime really soon because he was unbelievable and um, it felt like what we were doing was magic and it was something special in the time that was NXT coming up and like uh, for sure uh, Adrian Neville, NXT arrival was my favorite match, hands down. Definitely set the bar for it. Uh, we have a gentleman here. Hi. Um what do you think the main difference from coming from NXT up to the main roster is and why do you think so many wrestlers find it such hard to make the change? Um, uh, I think it's just a lack of communication for the, uh, for the best description of what, what's going on because, like, uh, for instance, when I was in NXT and I had the Bo Dallas character, I had a lot of control over that character and what it was doing. And then when I got brought up to WWE, I kind of lost a lot of that control. And they liked the character and they liked uh, everybody's reaction and what it was doing, but they didn't understand it as well as I did because I was the creator of it. And I didn't get the, the opportunity to really um, control the full trajectory of that character. So like whenever I got up to WWE, they, they think they understand the character and have you do one thing that, in my mind, would ruin the character or, or change the character completely, and you end up doing things that you have to do to keep your character alive. But in my mind, as the creator of the character, we kind of diminished and ruined the character itself. And the NXT, uh, especially when Dusty Rhodes is there, which if you had a great... A relationship with Dusty and he trusted you and your creative your creativity he'd let you have a lot of free reigns with that and with the loss of him and um, moving up to WWE I kind of lost a lot of control of where my character was going and uh, I think that is the biggest uh, difference is the control NXT you kind of get to create something and if it's really 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 good then you get the opportunity to bring it on the main stage, but you don't get all of the access to where that character gets to go. And I think that's um, a mistake in, in a lot of aspects because the people that create something that's really good should have a little more. Uh, like, for instance, uh, my brother, he, he got to control a lot of his, and that's why it is and was one of the most amazing characters to ever go through WWE because he never let go of that control of his character and he got to keep con creative control of it. And when you lose that, then everything's out the window. And I think that's the biggest, biggest difference is you lose a little bit of control with trying to keep your own character alive. That's fantastic, thank you very much. Right, we have time for one more question. We say, thank you very much for, for your candid honesty and just being Brilliant. Right, in a moment, we're going to... I'm hearing things again. I'm going to ask for the last question. If you've got a good one, put your hand up. Let's see some hands in the air. Anyone? Right. You, sir. Come meet me halfway. This is wearing me out. Okay. One last question. Shout it. Yeah. This question is for Bo Dallas. Um, if there's one indie wrestler you've never wrestled before, who would it be? Um... I, I would I, I always wanted to get in the ring with the um, the Briscoe brothers. Uh, I, I'm I'm not in a tag team right now, but those guys, 
they have the, a similar mentality. Like I can just see it in their work and the way they create things, and they're just they just care about what they they do in the ring. And I I've always respected that and loved that about them. And um, if I could get in the ring with anybody that I haven't been in the ring with that you would consider indie, not that they are indie, but like I've always respected them and wanting to get in the ring with them and seeing what we could do together. That would be really cool. And I'm looking forward to maybe in the future doing something like that. We, we're up for that match? Absolutely, right. Um, yeah, so thank you again for, for your time and, and your candor. Uh, do you have any last words to say to the guys before we set you free? I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out. And I really don't give a shit if you cheat on your taxes. Oh. I just want to say thank you very much, and I really appreciate uh, how, how wonderful you've treated me coming back to this country, and everything's been great, and really appreciate everything. Thank you very much. For the love of wrestling, show your appreciation for Mike Rotunda, Taylor Rotunda, also known as IRS, and Bob!